would you say if I told you things I'd never changed and we'll find a way to take our dreams and rearrange them who would believe that we could be in love again so let's just pretend that you I think the guitar is such an emotive instrument, don't you? Hmm. Remember Dwayne Eddy? Dwayne Eddy? Oh, sometimes you can be so shallow. Maybe that's why so many people have run aground on you. I used to like Dwayne Eddy. Shh, 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 shh. It seems to embrace all human emotion, doesn't it? Haunting, yet beguiling. Dramatic and at the same time tender. And underneath it all, that overpowering feeling of sexuality. <laughs> Shall I turn it up? <laughs> Can't you feel the sun just beating down on those small cobbled streets and red tiled roofs of an old Catalonian village? Yeah. <laughs> this is Fantasy Opus Number 7 by Fernando Saw, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm, I thought so. One can tell by the introductory largo con tanto. Oh, yeah, that's always a dead giveaway, then. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed, Penn, how the first section is centred upon C minor? This probably accounts for Saw's unusual avoidance of a minor mode variation on his C major theme. Does it? I thought everyone knew that. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I, I, I remember now. <laughs> you don't forget things like that in a hurry. <laughs> Mind you, Penn, to, uh, to play this piece successfully, it is necessary to share Saul's grief. To introduce the slightest element of theatricality is to step over the line of pomposity beyond which the guitar trespasses at its peril. Uh, of course. Gets on your nerves after a while, doesn't it? <laughs> well, you can't have too much of a good thing. You rat bag. How'd you go and didn't it? Of course not. You don't think I fell for all that, do you? Your musical appreciation falls somewhere short of the Bay City Rollers. It's a bit below the belt pin. Oh, come on, Vince. You were once moved to tears listening to Wild Thing by the Trogs. <laughs> that was a long time ago. My horizons have widened since then. I mean, look at my record collection. Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, Shuster, Bach, the lot. You uh, actually listen to them, do you? Listen to them? I know every word. <laughs> Thank you. Pen. Um, <clears throat> have you got anything by Elton John? Yeah, I've got a Watford programme in a bedroom. <laughs> Pen. No. Vince, you're asking me to commit myself. No, I'm not. I'm asking you to come to bed with me. <laughs> it's the same thing. Well, it never used to be. That was before you walked out on me on our wedding day. Oh, you always bring that up. Well, of course I bring that up. It was an event that changed the entire course of my life. Up until that day, I could see my road laid out clearly in front of me. I bet it was paved with yellow bricks. Vince, I don't think a hernia would suit you. Sorry. There's one other small point you seem to be forgetting. I'm still officially married to Graham. But you broke up over two years ago. Your divorce absolute comes through soon. I know. I just feel there's a principle involved. Well, if you felt that strongly about principles, you wouldn't have left him in the first place. Now, don't start moralising with me, Vince. It's got nothing to do with you. Fine. But do you honestly think during the two years since you parted, Graham has lived like a monk? Why not? After all, he was virtually celibate during the two years we were married. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that side of things, Pen. All right, I'm sorry. 
Look, Vince, it's, it's just not easy for me to trust you. You don't trust me? No, I didn't say that. I said it's not easy for me to trust you. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? No. Oh. I do love you, Pen. I know. And I love you. It's just that... Well, if we're ever going to make all the tiny pieces fit together, you'll have to offer more than the opportunity of an occasional romp in the hay. Well, like what? I don't know. Something tangible. Oh. Penny? Mm-hmm? Will you marry me? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, I wish I had a tape recorder. <laughs> well, if you like time to think about it. God, that laugh of yours, you sound like a Volkswagen on a cold morning. <laughs> After the way you walked out on me five years ago, you think I need time to think about it? The answer's no, Vince. So what do you want me to do? I don't know. Vince, don't you ever get lonely living here? No. <clears throat> I'll repeat the question. Don't you ever get lonely living here alone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> now you come to mention it, sometimes the solitude can be agonising. Mm. Must be terrible for you. Perhaps you need some permanent company. You mean I should, um, ask someone to come and live here with me? Well, it's not for me to say. I'm merely trying to find a solution for your loneliness. Well, for the past two or three weeks, I have been wanting to ask a good friend of mine if she would consider sharing a flat with me. Why haven't you just asked her, then? Well, I was frightened she might say no. She wouldn't. Do you know her, then? <laughs> Vince, have you got a yellow pages handy? I was just wondering if there was a 24-hour trust service in the vicinity. Will you come and live here? Yes. <laughs> if you'll have me. Well, take that as a red pen. Sorry. <laughs> what about my parents? Well, I'd prefer it to be just us two, Pen. <laughs> How do I tell them? Well, well, you just tell them. You're not a child anymore. It's your birthday next week. You'll be 28. Yes, I know how old I'll be. Thank you very much. I'll just have to find the right moment to break the news. Well, when would you like to move in? I don't know. It's all so sudden. Well, it's taken me by surprise as well. <laughs> when, roughly? Friday week. Oh, good. I've had a key cut for you. <laughs> Phew. Norman, I'll do all this. Uh, sorry, darling. A fantastic article in your magazine. They did a survey, well, a sex survey, amongst women in the over 40s. Amazing results. I hope you're going to eat your cake, Norman. Yes, of course. It... <laughs> Daphne? Yes, Norman. Do you still, well, do you still get a thrill from, you know, Oh, for heaven's sake, Norman, we are in the 1980s. If you mean sex, then say... thingy. <laughs> yes, but do you? Sometimes. Well, you never say anything to me when it happens. You're never there when it happens. <laughs> oh, you've got a wicked sense of humour, Daphne. Ah, happy birthday, darling. Thank you. Mm. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Oh, come on, honestly. Just look at this. You'll be telling me we've got silly hats and jellies next. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly, darling. Light the candle, Norman. Oh, for God's sake, Norman, why don't you use napalm and be done? With Sorry, it? darling, but it's a pipe lighter. Sorry. You want me to blow that out, do you? And you've got to do it all in one breath. <laughs> well, I'll try. Make a wish first. <laughs> all right. Oh, I feel so silly. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 Thought of one. 
You can change your mind, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Clever girl. What did you wish for? If she tells you, darling, it won't come true. Don't be so bloody childish, no. <laughs> Oh, I'll get it. I wish you wouldn't call me names in front of Penny. Well, in future, I'll save them up till we're alone, then. Oh. What are you doing here? Well, I just came around to wish you a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Mm. Have you told her yet? Well, yes and no. Well, have you or haven't you? No. <laughs> it's not easy, Vincent. I've tried dropping gentle hints. I mentioned that the house seemed to be getting rather small with three adults, and yesterday a builder arrived with an estimate for an extension. Well, you, you just can't leave them a note pen. Dear Mum and Dad, I've moved. They've got to be told. It's common decency. You are the last person in the world to give anyone a lecture on common decency. All right, Pen, let's not row. Look, I, I know to begin with there'll be a bit shocked, but it soon passes. I remember when I told my parents I was leaving home. They soon got over it. In fact, that night they threw a party. <laughs> There's a slight difference between leaving home and going to live with somebody. I don't think I'll ever have the strength to tell her. Pen, you're not alone anymore. It's you and me now, Pen. It's us, all the way down the line. We love each other, and you can't get stronger than that. We're behind each other in everything we do. We'll take each other's pain. We'll share each other's joy. Whatever happens in your future, I'll be right there beside you. I promise. All right. Strike while the iron's hot. I'll tell her now. Good. Listen, I'll wait in the car. <laughs> you will not wait in the car. You're coming in here with me. But your mother doesn't like me very My much. My mother hates your guts, but you're still coming in here. <laughs> Mummy, a, a friend just called to see me. Well, ask her in then, darling. Hello there. <laughs> Good to see you again, Vince. And you, Mr. Warrener? Yeah, an amazing article in this magazine. Were you aware that 76% of women in the over 40s group have only made love to one man in their entire life? <laughs> really? Does it give his name? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you like a drink, Vince? Uh, sherry or there's um, some of my homemade beer? Oh, yeah, that'll do nicely, Mr. Warrener. I'll you. get you a glass. just called round to say happy birthday, Mummy. Oh, yes, uh, happy birthday, Pen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to put it over there with the rest? Uh, no, 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 it's all right. I'll, I'll just pop it in here. <clears throat> Would you like some cake, Vince? Oh, oh, thank you very much, Pen. So, what have you been doing with yourself today, hmm? Well, I've been window shopping. Yeah? Yeah, looking for new bedding, that sort of thing. Pity the army surplus store has closed down, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I imagine you must miss it terribly, Daphne. <laughs> Here's your cake. I'll just take your coat and hang it in the hall. <clears throat> Do I make you nervous? No, 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 no. Just that I forgot my crucifix. <laughs> Same recipe as the wedding cake, you know. Really? Mmm, very nice. We should have turned up now. <laughs> you really are the most callous and insensitive person I've ever met. No, I'm not really, Daphne. I just say these things for your benefit. I'm trying to prove I'm not frightened of you. You don't have to prove that to me. I'm not. I'm trying to prove it to me. <laughs> Back again. I might as well take these things into the kitchen. Now? Good a time as any. All right, you wait here. Oh, all right. Mummy, Daddy, I'm glad you're together. You're doing what? Oh, Mummy, please try to understand. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Daddy. I, I, I do think it's your baby. Stop it. How many heavens are How on earth is you? Well, I hope you're satisfied. 
satisfied now. I couldn't eat another thing, thank you. <laughs> Did you tell her? <laughs> she says it's dirty. She said I'll be one mess of boils by the end of the week. She's taking legal advice on having me snatched back. And she's taking out a private summons against you for pimping. <laughs> she took it better than you expected. Mm. Now, look what you've done. Please try to calm her down, Daddy. Well, what did you suggest? A stun grenade? <laughs> Coming, darling! Ben, there's been something I've been meaning to tell you. What? Well, let's not talk about it here. Shall we go for a drive? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Well, I'm off now, Mrs. Warrender. Get out of here! <laughs> oh, what was it you wanted to tell me? Don't keep me in suspense. Well, it's nothing much, Pen. Uh, just an idea I've been toying with, that's all. You've been saying that for the last 15 minutes. Oh, come on. Yeah, well, <laughs> better sit down first, Pen. Well, <laughs> you see, Oh, come on, do tell me. Well, you know how easily I change my mind, Pen. Change? Yes, well, you have always been somewhat capricious, shall we say? Absolutely. Oh, I haven't changed my mind about that. Oh, it's very reassuring, Vincent. So what have you changed your mind about? I don't like my flat anymore, Pen. Why not? It's a lovely flat. No, it's not, Pen. It's, it's very noisy. Only when you're in. <laughs> it's been getting me down recently. Why don't we move out? How can we move out? I haven't even moved in yet. You don't know how lucky you are, Ben. Vince, what's happened? Well, nothing. I, I just fancy a change of walls, that's all. Vincent? Well, Ben, the postman called this morning. And? He delivered uh, a letter. Yes, well, they're trained in that kind of thing. <laughs> There's a letter telling me I had to vacate the flat by next Thursday. But why? Why? I'll tell you why, Pin. Subsidence. What? Subsidence. They just discovered the block was built on a natural fort in the Earth's crust. Like San Francisco? That's exactly what the civil engineer said. And you know what happened in San Francisco? Don't bear thinking about it. But never in the history of this world has there been an earthquake in Walthamstow. You've been very lucky, Pen. <laughs> Vincent, for once in your moronic little life, will you please tell me the truth? You uh, don't believe me? Of course I don't believe you. OK. It's from Barbados. Dear Vincey, how are you, you dirty old ram? <laughs> Just a short note to let you know that I'll be returning early. I'll be arriving at Heathrow on Thursday morning. Please make sure that the flat is tidy and the sheets have been changed. See you then. Love and kisses, Big Ed. Who's Big Ed? Eddie Brown. He owns the bedding shop where I work and the flat where I live. You said it was your flat. You said you had it on a long-term lease. I lied. Why? I'm a liar. <laughs> you see, Eddie spends six months of the year out of the country for tax reasons. While he's away, I sort of look after the flat, make sure no one breaks in or squats there. So for half the year, I live rent-free. What do you do for the other half? Well, last year, I stayed at this bird, uh, bloke's flat in um, Highbury. So everything in the flat's his as well? Yes, well, I should have guessed as much when I saw your record collection. You couldn't even pronounce Shostakovich, let alone appreciate him. Glad it's not a pips or boost, mate. <laughs> yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Well, thank you very much, Vincent. 
I'm sorry. You watched me. You even encouraged me to tell my mother I was leaving home, and all the time, you knew you were being thrown out. Look, Pen. No, don't look, Pen, me. I've just made the most momentous decision to leave the warmth and comfort of my parents' house to go and live with a homeless person. My destiny is in the hands of a vagrant. You end up living in a cardboard box, I'll be dead within the month. Look, will you listen to no, me? No, I will not listen to you anymore, Vince. Are you deliberately trying to hurt me, or do you get some kind of sadistic buzz out of all this? Of course I wasn't trying to hurt you. I wanted to be someone in your eyes. You're always telling me about your married life with Graham. You and the Volvo man had everything. Your ceramic hob, your eye-level grill, his turbocharged Flymo. <laughs> I couldn't offer you anything like that, Pen. So I pretend. Oh, you are a moron. I didn't want anything like that. I'd only just escaped from it. I wasn't looking for an open-plan house and an eye-level grill. I'd have been happy with a tent and a sandwich toaster. I wish you'd have said something earlier, Pen. I knew of this lovely little bivouac that was going to have a week. <laughs> So where do we go from here? Holmescroft Road. Holmescroft Road? Yes, yeah, not far. What's in Holmescroft Road, Vince? A hostel? Our new flat. Sorry? I've got us another flat, Ben. I went round to see it this morning, fell in love with it, and signed on the dotted line. You've got another flat? Well, why didn't you tell me? What's it like? Oh, you'll love it, Ben. Come on, we'll have a look. It won't take us long to decorate it. Ah, it needs decorating. Well, it doesn't need decorating. <laughs> Just thought you might like to choose your own colour scheme. How did you find it? Through Lenny. Who? Lenny, what's his name, your best man? Yeah. He was working at the flat last week. When he heard what happened, he found the landlord and uh, put in a word for us. Oh, that was nice of him. Yeah. How's Lenny doing these days? Oh, very well. He's got his own pest control business. Ugh, what a horrible job. Pays very well, Pen. Well, this is it. Good God. <coughs> Looks like the Holiday Inn at Port Stanley. <laughs> We're just coming to get the feel of the place, Pen. I've already got the feel of the place. <coughs> I'm itching. Well, all it needs is a bit of work done on it. Yes, like demolishing and rebuilding. <laughs> They're just first impressions, Pen. Have a look at the kitchen. No, on second thought, it's not bothering. <laughs> I'd like to see the kitchen, please. Robert Carrier, eat your heart out. <laughs> well, it's no use trying to hide it from me, Pen. I can tell. You're unimpressed. <laughs> you mean people actually cooked food in here? Oh, yes. They did cook food in here. Well, it could do with a bit of a wiping over. <laughs> it could do with wiping out. Oh, Vince. What's that lying in the sink? Looks like some kind of furry mould. I wonder if it answers to a name. <laughs> Wash it down the sink. No, I'm going to send it for analysis. It might cure something. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Who did this flat belong to before? It was a dear old lady who unfortunately was crippled with arthritis. She just couldn't handle all the cleaning. Well, I couldn't live here. I've never seen anything quite so disgusting in all my life. Come and see the rest of the flat. I take it all back. Well, it's, uh, it's different. Mm. It's not often these days that one comes across a room decorated in goat's bar. <laughs> <laughs> what colour would you say these walls are? I think they call it, um, H-block beige. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how sweet! That dear little old arthritic lady was a member of the Red Brigade. All right, Pen. The bottom line now. What do you think of it? What do I think of it? I think it is the pits of the earth, the bowels of the universe, the cesspool of hell. <laughs> well, you don't have to make your mind up straight away. <laughs> Vince, it's the kind of place cats come to die. Believe me, Pen, this is a superior abode of great character. Good God. It is structurally perfect, built with quality bricks and mature timbers. And the kitchen comes complete with integral botulism. It's only a lump of mould. 
It's got little hairs growing out of it. Well, so is Elton John, but you like him. <laughs> oh! Oh, look out of the bat bins! There's a mangrove swamp! <laughs> Some houses have mice. We could have iguanas. All right, then. I admit at the moment it doesn't look much, but uh, try and imagine it once I've decorated it. You don't know the first thing about decorating. Well, I'll get a book. Vince, it would take a miracle. I'll get the New Testament. <laughs> I'll do all the designing, Pen. I've got more of a flair for that kind of thing. You're a bit basic. I thought, uh, maroon and gold flock wallpaper, lime green woodwork, a nice yellow carpet, and, uh, those African bee curtains. What do you reckon? It would look like a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you have got no idea. It needs to be lightened. Um some of that natural grass wallpaper. Cream skirtings and ceilings. Um, strip the doors and the floors, varnish them, scatter a few rugs about, and, um, yes, blinds at the windows. That would look horrible. <laughs> You've got no imagination. It would look lovely. I can just see it now. Uh -huh. I've been conned, haven't I? <laughs> you rotten... Pen. We could really make something of this place. What do you say? Oh, all right, then. Great, you won't regret it, Ben. I think I have already. I'll start stripping the walls tomorrow. You check out the wallpaper you want, and we'll have it finished in no time. Look, Vince, let's get something straight right from the start. I pay half of everything, the rent, the bills, even the decorations. Yeah, all right, Pen. Well, we'll talk about that no, later. No, we won't. We're going into this together. I want us to share everything. In that case, you're going to just love the bathroom. Uh -huh. We share the bathroom? Only with the other tenants. <laughs> Pen, mm. wipe your feet as you leave. We've got to buy new furniture, curtains, carpets. Bed. Uh, yes. Pen, have you got any money? Oh, yes. Uh, no, I don't mean... I mean any savings. Well, some. How about you? No, not much. I suppose I could ask the bank for a loan. Mm. Well, we'll have to try and save our money. I mean, I think we've both got to be prepared to make sacrifices. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was thinking about selling the car. That won't be necessary, will it? Well, I want to see a friend of mine who works in the motor trade. He said he'd give us £3,000 for it. Worth considering. Vince, there must be another way. Yeah, we'll see. Hmm. This takes me back a few years. What does? You know, all the plans, window shopping, all the excitement of buying a new home. <laughs> that didn't work out too well for me, though, did it? Pen. Did you really love him? Oh, yes. I loved him. I never really stopped loving him. Even when I was married to Graham. Oh, I thought you were... saying about the car but I leave it entirely up to you you do what you think's best well three grand does buy a lot of furniture pen yes and after all we'll still be able to get around absolutely we can both use my car yes <laughs> what you mean you've been trying to sell my car 
You said we both got to make sacrifices, Pen. God, you've got a nerve. That's your trouble, Pen. You're all self, self, self. <laughs>